Hey everybody, this is Christina Williams with Just Criminal Law. It's all we do. David Mann and I were talking and he wanted to know if there's any stories that might be interesting to people out there about how or what influenced me to want to do criminal defense. So David, um, you and I visited and, and we're going to kind of go through that anecdote today. Yeah, that's it. I was just interested because what you do is, you know, it's, it's something that is clearly motivated to from within you. I mean, you you care about doing this. You wouldn't do it otherwise. And so I was sort of wondering, well, where might that have come from? And we just have to share this story. It's such a great story to tell people about one of the factors that motivated you to be a defense attorney. So start out. You were in high school and what happened? I was in high school and I got a pretty harsh consequence to a decision I made that, you know, probably shouldn't have done, definitely shouldn't have done, but the consequence outweighed the the act itself. So I learned quickly that um, you don't always just fall on your sword and fess up to something without knowing um, what's ahead. Okay, so that's how it turned out. So what happened uh, from the beginning of the series of events? I was a junior in high school, and we were on a school activity. One of our friends brought some alcohol, and it was an overnight activity. And so that night, while, after dinner, while we were in the hotel room, we weren't really being supervised. I think there was only one one uh, counselor, school counselor, that, that was in charge of supervising this large group of kids. And so, you know, we were having fun, and, and one of the girls um, brought out the bottle of alcohol, and, and several of us had some alcohol to drink. Okay, so you knew you shouldn't have been doing this, but you did it anyway, as many people have in high school. And then it didn't quite go as smoothly as that. What happened next? Well, we did what we were supposed to on the school trip. We, you know, we were there for an activity. We did the activity. And then when we got home the next day, one of the girls who wasn't involved in... Um, drinking told her mom and her mom went up and told the principal about what happened oh okay so the principal found out about what happened and I imagine probably was not pleased right (laughs) no he was not happy and you know he told all of the kids that were on the trip that whoever was involved in this needed to come forward and be truthful about what happened Okay, that seems like reasonable. But then what happened? Well, so my parents made me go forward and admit to what had happened. And granted, you know, this is a couple days later and there's really no proof of any of this other than, you know, one girl's word. But they said, you know, you're going to go tell the truth. I was the only one that came forward, so that kind of (laughs) stinks. You're the only one, really? Yes. No one else came forward. And, you know, the school, I can't remember the details of it. They didn't ask me to name names, but they certainly gave me very harsh punishments. Okay. Well, well, I think we're all wondering what the punishment was for something like that. It was, yeah. So it was the spring season and I was running track. Um, Prom was coming up. I was part of the National Honor Society. Um, I was on the student council, and um, I had won a close-up trip to go to Washington. So I had all these things coming up that spring of my junior year, and the school took all of it. Wow. They, they, they t- didn't allow you to do any of that stuff? No, I was completely kicked off of everything and um i then i had to take an alcohol awareness class and none of the other kids that did this none of this happened to them right right exactly 
Wow, okay, so now I kind of understand this would have maybe been a pretty, made a big impression on you at the time. So tell us about what it felt like and, and how it's lasted, the impression. Sure, I mean, it it felt unfair, It you know, especially since I was the only one kind of facing the music. And looking back, my parents certainly could have handled it in-house, so to speak, and punished me, and I would have learned my lesson. And, um, you know, that was just a, an example of, you know, going in and, and hoping that the person that you're you're pleading guilty to, so to speak, is going to give you a fair sentence and not not having any idea before you go in of what that's going to look like. Yeah, because in that situation, I mean, you are effectively the defendant, but since you're a kid and your parents aren't lawyers and stuff, you, you don't really get a chance to say, let's weigh all the evidence carefully and fairly. It's just one the principal has all the power and gets to do what he, or in some cases she, wants to do. And that's sort of not fair, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I definitely learned a hard lesson. And, you know, I I don't know what would necessarily happen this day and age. But, you know, there was a little bit of culpability on the part of the school there, too. Yeah, <laughs> leaving yeah. All these, leaving all these kids unattended. But... Um, you know, my parents didn't care about that. They just wanted to teach me a lesson and to show me, you, you know, you have to be honest. And and I understood when we were done. Yeah. And to this day, you now um, have a sort of a personal investment in fighting for people to tell their story against, you know, the, the powers that be. Right. You can put your best foot forward and... Um, you can go in and before you plead guilty, know what you're looking at at least. And it's not that, you know, I understand people make mistakes, but I believe in justice and fairness. And um, there has to be a little bit of that in every situation and definitely has to be a lot of it when I go to court with my clients.